This is the presentation of the Stay Safe Online and Spotting Scams webinar. This is a recording. So the topics that we'll be covering today are having a look at the numbers, who's getting, like, um, how many people are getting scammed and by how much. There's uh, some interesting numbers in there. We have um, a look at online safety and then preventing scams. Sort of focus for preventing scams is centered around phone scams. However, it's really about the message uh, more so than the delivery method. So you could get the same kind of message delivered either as a, an email or as an SMS or as a phone call or even someone stopping you in the street and talking to you. So preventing scams is, is much more universal. Uh, a little bit of information about me. My name is Paul. I've been an IT professional for the past 18 years. I've been an IT user for the past 30 years having sort of grown up around computers um, back you know, remembering the time before dial-up internet. I, I've been uh, around them for quite some time. I um, love to teach computer skills and I hate getting scam calls. I get one every couple of days usually on the home phone for me usually. Uh, usually wanting me to either um, gain access to my computer or whether they're scams or not, they're trying to sell me solar panels. Uh, so have a look at the numbers. How much are we losing to scams? So what do you guys think? All of 2019, with this being recorded in 2020, we're not quite finished yet, how much money was known to have been lost through scams in Australia alone? Do you think it was less than 10 million or more than 10 million? More. Oh, I'd yeah. say more. Yeah, quite a bit more. In fact, 142.8 million uh, throughout the year of 2019 through all types of scams. Uh, we can see from this chart that um, the amount lost definitely spikes and goes up and down and the number of reports also fluctuates throughout the year with that, that highest spike in July. Um, what was happening in July, is that around tax time, isn't it? Uh, June, yeah. July? Yeah. So possibly a lot of uh, tax related scams. Um, only 11.8% of the reports reported financial losses, so the number of reports versus the amount lost. The, um, which suggests to me that per um, amount lost was um, a lot was per issue, I should say. So for every one issue, uh, potentially a lot of money could be lost. If we actually um, break down those numbers a little bit, we see that $61.8 million was from investment scams. Uh, $26.6 million was from dating and romance scams. $10.1 million was from false billing, so saying that you owe something. And uh, hacking, online scams, remote access, and identity theft, filling out the uh, most of the rest of that one. So the highest one was from investment scams, people being told to invest in a particular type of share, or maybe um, OG timeshare, something like that. So it was a lot of money. That's um, a lot of money. Compare that to this year so far, 2020, up to October, with the numbers for November not being in yet, they being the 1st of December, actually. Um, so all scam types so far for 2020 is 132 million. So not quite there yet, but um, definitely got the chance to, to beat last year. I think beating last year is a, a, a huge thing to celebrate. Uh, interesting this year, um, a lot, $49.2 million so far, loss of investment scams. 31.1 million from dating and romance scams. So that's up quite a bit from last year. Whether or not uh, people have been doing a lot more online dating, potentially. 10.2 from threats to life or arrest. So you might receive sometimes an automated phone call that says uh, you have an outstanding warrant, pay this amount um, or you'll be going to jail. Uh, false billing, remote access and classified scams filling out most of the rest for this year. The false billing um, is there again. Remote access is one that I see a lot of, whereas, um, for example, Telstra or um, Microsoft uh, claim to be calling, where it's not them, obviously, or maybe not so obviously, and uh, people give them permission or grant access to their computers, so that's kind of scary. Uh, let's have a look at the types of threats. Uh, there are three types of threats and what we can do about each of them. So the three main types of threats are, to your computer, uh, physical, if someone gains physical access to your computer, and that could be your mobile phone as well, they can do whatever they want, more or less. Uh, network, online connections to bad sites, clicking on links in emails and opening attachments. Executable, opening those attachments or downloading things that are harmful. 
Now the network and the executable often have a lot of overlaps because they're all sort of to do with online. Um, whereas physical is if someone can gain access to something. So if we have a look first at the physical defense, because that is, as I said, sort of separate, um, the threats are access to your computer, which could also include external drives. So if you have a USB thumb drive plugged into a hard into your computer, or even an external hard drive, uh, that can be quite easily sort of, you know, removed and put into one's pocket. Another one that a lot of people don't think about is storing your private data and where it's stored. So either storing your private information from home on a work computer, or storing information from work on your home computer. If either is compromised, some data is going to be removed. Uh, in terms of defense for physical, well, we can secure data. So if, even if someone did manage to steal a USB drive or an external hard drive, um, if everything was password and encrypted, then they wouldn't um, be able to do anything with it. Restricting access to the computer can also include locks for laptops. A lot of places where they use laptops will have a sort of a threaded wire chain um, or wire that can be uh, bolted to the table to prevent laptops from going walkabout. Uh, private data located, located on PC. So don't store your private data on your work computer and don't store your work computer stuff on your home computer. Okay, the next type of threat is network. The source of network threats often come from either your web browser, so that's really your access to the internet. So web browser is a really important one to um, be focused on and remote access. So once again, allowing someone to connect remotely to your computer who is not a reputable source. Um, someone like myself who is a computer technician will often ask or sometimes ask to connect to your computer to try and resolve your issues. It's um, quite a good technique when we're in lockdown and uh, we're not supposed to be going out. So being able to connect to someone's computer, but you should only let someone that you actually trust uh, connect to your computer. And for your web browser, um, the, the sites that we visit can be the main source for, for network threats. The defense against these, restricting access um, to your network using good sense, and you'll see good sense, this is the first time it's listed, but it's definitely not the last, because your, your brain is a very important line of defense. Um, having a firewall on your computer, if you're using Windows 10, that's sort of built in already. Uh, for your web browser, which is really, you know, your connection to the internet, um, having added plugins and a good browser, like Firefox or, or Brave or two browsers that I recommend, we will get more into my personal recommendations for some of these things uh, at a few more slides time. Uh, as I said, network and executable um, have an overlap. Uh, executable threats, uh, the sort of blanket term for the executable threats are called malware, which is short for malicious software, coming from the words malicious and software, pushed together to become malware. Uh, they can include ransomware, spyware and adware, viruses and zero day attacks. So ransomware is one of the ones that give me the heebie-jeebies the most, I must say. It includes things like um, there's a, a rather famous one called WannaCry. Uh, most ransomware works in the same way, where it actually encrypts all the files on your computer and then um, asks you to pay money to unlock them. And you're hoping that if you do pay the money that they will unlock it. Uh, a lot of companies are now getting held for ransom in a different way, where they say, okay, you don't want to pay to unlock them, fine. How about if we release your files? onto the internet instead. So it could be you know, a customer's database or something if we're talking about a business. Uh, spyware and adware can be used to annoy you or even monitor your keystrokes or what you're typing in the computer. Viruses can do all sorts of different things, even just slow down your computer and uh, create annoying pop-ups. And uh, zero-day attacks are any vulnerability that have not yet been discovered by the um, sort of defense community. The way that we can prevent or defend against executable threats uh, is having good software from good vendors, so knowing where you're getting your software from. Um, having good sense, yes, again, so um, being able to identify the types of things that are not good. Um, having some anti-malware and antivirus software, once again, they are listed there, but we'll be discussing them again in a moment. I like to think um, when it comes to network and executable threats, I like to think of them in terms of lines of defense. As illustrated below. So we're talking more exclusively about networking and executable threats. So the first line is your brain or critical thinking. That means when a pop-up on your screen says, hey, you've won an iPad, you might go, mm, have I really? Is that really likely that I've won an iPad? 
Uh, I'm, I'm the 999th million customer on this website. Does that mean I'm going to win something? Probably not. Uh, the second line, if your brain says, hey, yeah, actually, that's a good deal, let's click on that. Uh, hopefully, your browser, with uh, its default settings and maybe some additional plugins, says, hey, this place is um, not good. We recommend you go back. So that's the second line of defense. Uh, let's pretend that that didn't work and you still click forwards. Uh, hopefully, the software on your computer will also prevent any damage from the attack having that installed on your computer and then once you download something it says hey we found this error in this thing that you just downloaded uh, maybe you didn't have software installed and the attack has now made it through those previous lines of defense uh, you now you've now got a problem on your computer so hopefully you have software that will allow you to recover from attacks uh, maybe this, you can run a scan on your computer and it removes the bad files yeah, if that doesn't work hopefully you have backups of your data and you restore that um, there's an old computer saying, which is you always have one less backup than you need. Uh, another way to say it is two is one and one is none. If you have two backups and one of those fails, you only have one backup then, and then you don't really have any backups at all. Um, and then if you don't have any backups, well then you better do a clean slate and start from scratch again. Uh, not a good way to be, not definitely something you don't want to uh, have to ever face. Um, that all sounds pretty daunting and you might be ready to about chuck your computer out the window, but preventing problems can be easy. Here's a checklist for making things better. Number one is knowledge. So attending things like this, uh, doing research online, uh, connecting with some of the Australian government sites that have very good information on this kind of stuff. Um, using your knowledge to apply critical thinking. So thinking, is Optus really going to call me and tell me there's a problem and they need to know my account details? You know, using your brain. Having a good browser, we'll talk about those again in a moment, same as plugins. I'm going to recommend some free antivirus and anti malware software. Uh, so, for knowledge and critical thinking, there's some, some resources here. Uh, Scamwatch is an Australian government site, and uh, that is where I got these statistics from before the numbers section. The ACCC, or the Australian Consumer, I can't remember what the other C stands for. Um, they have a little book of scams that you can download that has um, a good reflection of um, scams and what to do to um, prevent being attacked. Um, so that's, that's some place where you can get some information from. Before we move on, particularly with the, uh, the software and the browser settings and things, it's important to think about each person's individual um, level of comfort when it comes to security. As we make something more secure, it becomes harder to use. As we make something less secure, it becomes easier to use. So for example, to log into your phone that you have um, at the moment in front of you perhaps, do you have to just swipe it and it unlocks? Do you have to enter in a four digit code, maybe a six digit code? Maybe you have an actual password that actually has letters and numbers in it, which will be more secure. Yes, every time you want to open your phone, it does take you longer to get into, but it definitely makes it more secure. Another way to think about this is that you wouldn't want to put your house keys in a Fort Knox type of setup. Uh, every time you wanted to go out in the morning, you'd have to go through several layers of security just to be able to lock and unlock your house. Um, but on the other hand, um, the title to your house might be a place where you would want to keep it in a much more secure location because you don't care if it's harder to get into because you don't access it as often. Everyone's perfect level here is a very individual thing. I don't mind having a longer um, password to get into my phone, and I don't mind having to use what's called two-factor authentication, which we don't have to cover in this session, but we hopefully we'll be covering in another one, um, a session about passwords and two-factor authentication. One sec. Okay. So a very individual thing as to what you're comfortable with for your level of security. So what are good browsers? Um, I personally recommend Firefox. It has the um, it's sort of built differently than most of the other browsers. It has much more of a privacy focus than, than most do. Um, for out of the box privacy and security, I recommend Brave, a little icon there to show you what they look like as well when you're going to look for them. Uh, Brave is um, 
built on Chrome. So Chrome is um, the browser that's made by Google. And that becomes very confusing too, because there's a company called Google that offer you a search engine called Google and a browser called Google Chrome. So that can be very confusing as to which one we're talking about here. I'm talking specifically about the browser made by the company Google and their browser is called Chrome. And a lot of the other browsers are built on that. Firefox is not, Brave is. But Brave comes um, built in, ready to protect you from things, whereas Firefox needs a few extra plugins um, to help make that happen. Uh, in terms of uh, plugins, so first of all, what is a plugin? Um, a plugin is a little thing, extra thing that goes into your browser that um, adds functionality usually. There are some that make things, um, might, might change your theme. There are some that can um, provide you places to save information to, sort of like bookmarks online. Uh, there's many different ones. Ones that I, two that I must have on my computer, and I have a few more than this, but these are the two that I recommend for everyone to have. Uh, the first one is uBlock Origin, and the second one is AdBlocker Ultimate. Ublock Origin is a great way to block um, not only annoying pop-ups and ads, but also it'll warn you if you're trying to go to a malicious site, one that it, it knows about. Um, Adblocker Ultimate is a way to block um, ads on websites, I believe. You can also block YouTube videos, uh, not YouTube videos, sorry, ads on YouTube videos, although that's a bit of a give and take scenario because most people who are making YouTube content rely on their um, ad revenue. So you can tell Adblocker, hey, don't block YouTube stuff, like other stuff. But that's, um, once again, something for a bit more of an advanced topic. Uh, if you want to find any of these plugins, you just need to first know what browser you're using. So if you're using Google Chrome, for example, you could type in uBlock Origin and then the words Google Chrome um, or Firefox or um, any other name of whatever browser you happen to be using. Uh, same goes for AdBlocker Ultimate. These plugins are available for any browser. You just need to make sure you search for it. I might even demonstrate in a moment how you add a new extension uh, or plugin. So plugins and extensions is kind of an um, interchangeable name for these things. What antivirus and anti-malware software do I recommend? I don't know if I mentioned on the last slide, but those plugins, they're all free. All, all plugins are. And if anyone says, hey, pay for this plugin, then it's just not how plugins work. Um, antivirus and anti-malware software can be quite expensive, but the one that I like to use called Clam Win um, is completely free. It's not very fancy, but it does the job very nice. In my personal opinion, programs like Norton try and do too much and um, they're trying to be sort of a Swiss Army knife, um, which is great if you want to do a little bit of everything, but uh, to do one specific task, it's not that great. Uh, Clamwin is just an antivirus program. It downloads a database, sort of um, a list of viruses that it knows about, um, that's updated every time it does a scan, then it scans your files, and that's it. No bells, there's no whistles, it's just clean and it works. It's actually originally built for um, Linux operating systems, which is an alternative to Windows and, and Macintosh. And it's designed on an open source philosophy where everyone has the right to uh, access and use the software. Uh, Malwarebytes is a bit different. It kind of does pester you a bit with, hey, do you want the premium version? Here's a trial for the premium version. You've got five days left on the premium. Do you want to keep going the premium or do you want to you know, upgrade? There are only three days left now. Uh, at the end of that, those annoying sort of um, trial period bits, you can just say, no, I don't want the extra protection. The free version of Malwarebytes is fine, but it does um, sometimes pester you with ads. So it has got, I guess you could technically say, adware built into it. I personally think it's worth it to have it on my computer. Um, the free version of it, in conjunction with Clanwin, keep me safe from viruses and malware. Now, a little side note here, if you're running Windows 10, it actually has pretty good built-in protection. Uh, it has Windows Defender. And um, as long as that's activated, you can check by clicking the Windows Start button, typing Windows Defender, and then pressing Enter. Uh, you'll be able to check to see if you have that enabled. Um, I like to add a few extra things for some extra protection just for my own um, peace of mind. But uh, Windows Defender built into Windows is actually pretty good already. Uh, preventing phone fraud. And I put phone in brackets because um, it really depends on, I, I say phone fraud, but any a scan, as I mentioned before, a scan could come to you from any sort of direction. It could be someone coming up and talking to you. It could be an email you've received, it could be an SMS, or obviously a phone call. Uh, here we have nine defense against phone scammer and telemarketers tactics here. 
what tactics is missing? Nine defenses. I oh, know nine defenses. We got nine different de defenses against it. Just checking the time there. We're doing good. Uh, number one, don't advertise. You know that when you see those those cars parked in the middle of the shopping centers, and you can go up and you can fill in your details, and you might win it. It's easy. It's free. All you need to do is give them your name, your number, your address, uh, your fax number, where you went to high school, what shoe size you wear, and uh, what's your favorite food. You don't, they don't want much. Uh, I can guarantee you the money they make on the advertising data they collect from you is far greater than the, the worth of that car. Uh, you can sign up for silence. There are sites where you can actually pay to have your number removed from different places and have things blocked. I personally have not done that before, but you can um, just look up. Um, no Mo Robo was one of them that's supposed to block um, those robo calls where there's a, a, an automated voice um, that calls you. Adios Anonymous. Consider in your phone putting the number of people that call you. So maybe your mum, uh, maybe a, a sibling, uh, maybe the local medical centre. And then if anything comes up on your phone that isn't in your phone book, let it go to the answering machine. If it's important, they'll leave a message. An important one to remember is you can. There's no law that says you have to answer the phone. You can just let it go to the answering machine. Uh, number four is block the bums. Uh, most mobile phones would have an option to block uh, numbers. You might have to fiddle around with the settings and maybe do some research. If you have a Samsung phone, go to our favorite friend YouTube and type in how to block a number on a Samsung phone. Uh, there are apps you can get as well. I can't speak to them. They do require a lot of access to your phone. So I'd be careful using just random apps on your phone. Uh, if you have uh, a newer phone, a lot of them are now becoming built-in um, ways to block people. Uh, I, I, might, I misspoke before when I said sign up for silence. I actually got that confused at number five here. The sign up for silence one, you can actually go to the do not call .gov. It's .gov .gov if you .gov. It's you. If you search for do not call register, you will um, find the do not call register and you can actually sign up your home phone number. Um, which sort of limits the number of people who are allowed to call you. Uh, telemarketers and charities are still allowed to call you, but it should block some of the calls. Uh, number five is actually pay for silence, where there are services where you can pay to have your number removed from things. Um, number six, kind of related to the number three, can't come to the phone, please leave a message. If you're not sure who's calling you, better go to the answering machine. Uh, punt the pause. Nine times out of ten, when you pick up the phone and you say hello, and there's a weird long pause and then they start talking that's the time usually to hang up it's either going to be um, someone trying to sell you something which i don't think most people want to do over the phone uh, personally if i'm going to buy something i'll go and do my own research um i'm not going to do it from like, if someone wants to sell me solar panels i'm going to do my own research i'm not going to just you know speak to the person who calls me uh, next one is pass on the push sometimes they will try and um forward you to another service or a call and hang up and when you call back it actually diverts your number to an overseas number so don't let them push your call around uh, i think that's also related to if you get a call that says i also had one i had recently it was um you have an outstanding warrant against you press one to dispute this warrant or something like something really you know seemingly silly like that um don't push the button don't push one don't push any buttons apart from you know whatever button you press to hang up your phone uh, you can also dive into the directories. If you keep getting a call from a certain number, if the number's coming up um, but you don't recognize it, try actually going to Google and searching for that number. You might find that other people have reported it. Uh, so you might be able to also add your voice to those and say, hey, yeah, I also got a call from this person. They were trying to do this or they asked me to give them this information. Uh, any questions about any of those um, defenses there? Good. Okay. Here we have some tactics and strategies to avoid being a phone fraud victim. Uh, yank the yes. This is a weird one, and the next two are kind of related to it. The idea is when the phone rings and you pick up the phone, don't say the word yes. Um, what they're trying to do is to get you to say yes, um, and then they, they have the ability to record that, and then they can actually add that recording of you saying yes to another recording of them saying do you accept these terms and conditions and agree to receive this service? And then they edit in your yes. Which is really dodgy. I had a friend in Germany had this term happen to him and he started receiving weird um, packages in the mail that he hadn't paid for but uh, were coming out of his account. 
Um, we have oops wrong name and oh my headset is a mess. These are both ways trying to get you to say yes. So you might answer the phone and go hello, like I do, or hello Paul speaking. It's the most I'll say when I answer the phone. Uh, and they'll say oops, um, I think it's this, I thought this was um, Steve's place. And they go no. Oh, hang on. Is this the right number? And they, they read back your number. Obviously, they have your number. And you say, yes, that's my number. Well, they've got you saying yes now. Um, and my headset is a mess. It's similar. It's, um, they're saying, oh, I can't hear you very well. Hang on, I'll just the headset. Can you hear me now? And what do you say? You say yes. If you'd like to try a fun game with this, if you've got kids or um, nieces and nephews, say, we're going to play a game. You can't say yes or no. Do you understand? And they say yes. And you go, right, you're out. And say, would you like some chips? And watch them go, uh, I would like some chips. <laughs> Isn't this fun? And they say yes, and then you go, ha, I got you again. That's a fun way to practice the, uh, the yes, no game, or the yank the yes, is to play the yes, no game. Um, we have a thing called smishing here, which relates to phishing, a term we haven't actually mentioned. Um, phishing is when they try and email you to get you your details. Smishing is the same thing, but on the phone or SMS. Uh, so if you receive an SMS saying, you have a parcel waiting for you, you need to register to, to collect it or we're going to throw it out. I've gotten those just recently actually. I took some screenshots on my phone. I should add them to this document. Um, so avoid those. You've won. I'm sorry but you never have. I'm sorry you've never won a holiday or a trip that you haven't put your ticket in for. You haven't paid money for entry into a lottery then you won't be winning it. Uh, the grandkids scan is a really nasty one where uh, they target older people. They call up with a bad line uh, with someone asking for help and the, 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 they're hoping that the grandparent will offer a name like is that you Sonny Jim and then you say yes yes grandma it's me um, I need help I'm in trouble and then they get transferred over to a much clearer line where they're speaking to someone who's a, a lawyer in inverted commas um, and now that they've got your name now what uh, they then say your kids your grandkids are really in trouble we need money to get them out of jail uh, I've heard this happening to people I've had people have said yes this happened to my um, my mother or my father, they got scammed this way. Uh, keeping the lights on, this could be lights, could be electricity, could be, um, which is lights, uh, gas. Uh, depending on the time of year, you might get a call during summer saying we're going to turn your energy off. You might get a call in the winter saying we're going to turn your gas off. Uh, they're usually targeted to whatever season you're in. Uh, spoofing is an interesting technique where they can make their phone number look like a different phone number. So they might call you with a number that looks like very close to the high school's number or, uh, or the medical center's number. So that trick with the um, entering the phone numbers into your uh, home phone don't always work if they can just make up your number look like it. That's an important one if for like the ATO. Sometimes you get a call saying, oh, we're from the ATO and the number comes up and it looks legitimate, but it's not. Uh, the pop-up relates to if there's a pop-up on the screen. Uh, you visit a website and it says, hey, your computer's been infected. Uh, that's usually you've, you've gone to a bad site. And um, usually you're not infected. So the best thing to do is to call um, help desk, or call your own, uh, sorry, your own computer support. So if you have a friend in the family, or contact someone like myself, I'm very happy to provide some free advice on um, if you're getting pop-ups on your screen and as to what to do. However, if you install those things like um, anti uh, malware bytes and WinClam, these kind of things shouldn't happen. Plus your browser, your plugins as well, Ubox Origin. Um, but it's good to let other people know. Say, if you ever see a pop-up saying you need to call tech support, don't do it. Uh, ATO scams. In America as well, we're, they're coming up to um, their tax season, I believe it's January. So their ATO is called the IRS, the Inland Revenue Service. So they're going to be getting a lot of scams coming up very soon, saying, oh, if you want to have your tax return released, you know, send us 50 bucks and we'll get it released quicker or something. Um, the please help scams are really, really nasty. Uh, basically, if there's something going on, maybe there's been a bushfire, you get a call saying, can you help you know, donate money to help the, the animals or the people? And uh, guess what? That money's not going where you expect it to. If you do want to donate, make sure you contact these sites directly. Go to um, the Red Cross or something like that, where you preferred charity and um, go that directly to them. And the good old, can we help you? Calling up saying, you know, you, there's a problem with your windows. Um, we can help you fix it. Uh, there's many videos out there. If you type in um, getting scammed by a scammer into YouTube, you can watch some videos of people, actually the whole channels are about allowing scammers to connect to the computer and showing you what happens when they um, try and do it. But they've got it set up in a way that it protects them so they, they don't actually you know, do any damage. Uh, that's always an amusing one to watch, in my opinion. 
Have you guys ever experienced any of these types of uh, frauds before or heard anyone getting scammed in this way? Yes, uh, about a couple of years ago when I was at work, it was uh, more like a business call through APO, I mean, regarding APO payment. Mm -hmm. So I sort of um, freaked out and <laughs> didn't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. So I asked an opinion to my director at that time, and then, yeah, it was resolved. But I've also heard um, one of my friends back in Korea uh, had a similar call, and then um, they were holding a line, and um, they sort of communicated uh, taking notes instead of um, making sound over the phone mm -hmm. with someone else. So they actually caught the scammer <laughs> while on the phone. <laughs> So I'm wondering, I mean, if it's possible in Australia, if I don't hang up the phone, if I get a scam call, and then um, if I report it directly to the police uh, at the same time, then could uh, they be able to check it or like? Uh, it is possible that they, they can technically track um, someone who's calling you. It can be a bit harder. That can be a question for the phone company. So if this person's contacting me. Um, unfortunately, sometimes they can call from like um, an internet phone, like a, a voice over IP, like Skype for example. They can actually put credits into Skype and call landlines or call mobile, so it's a lot harder to track them. Um, I also got almost scammed by the ATO. I got a, um, a letter in the mail saying you owe us money. I'm like, haha, I bet you this is a scam. So I, I went online, I went to the ATO site, I looked them up, got the phone number, I called them myself, waited online. And then um, they said, no, actually, do us money. I'm like, oh, bugger. So it wasn't a scam, but I did my due diligence and I checked with a number that I looked up myself. And that's an important take home is if the Commonwealth Bank, for example, rings and says, oh, there's a problem, hang up on them, look up your own number for the Commonwealth Bank, call them on that and say, I got this phone call. Uh, well, number one, the Commonwealth Bank will never call you and say there's a problem. Uh, they will send you a letter. Um, but you should always be checking your own um, contact details and contacting them that way. Um, I, yeah. I was quite new back then in Australia, so it was a new experience for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, people who, people who are new to the country and getting, getting um, you know, these kind of things like, oh, geez, I better just pay it. And that is what all of these things, if you notice, all of these things are playing yeah. on your emotion. Mm. Yeah, their, goal, <laughs> yeah. their goal is to put you on the back foot. So when the phone rings, they say, there's a problem with your computer. Like, oh no, fix it for me, please. Um, or you owe us money. Ah, okay. Or well, sometimes the opposite. You've won money. Congratulations. You must be so happy. You just need to pay a $50 unlocking fee. Uh, how would you like to pay that? And they're like, oh my God. So one way or another, usually it's they, they put the fear into you. Um, sometimes they put the excitement into you, but it's usually, um, if, you look at, if you look at the list here, it's mostly about fear. Which is a real pity. Well, There's been um, one going around since COVID. A lot of people have been purchasing pets, like dogs and cats. And um, a friend of mine purchased a dog online mm. and on a website, and it looked very professional. And she spoke to somebody on the phone, and they exchanged emails and everything. Mm. And she spent two thousand dollars. And it was a scam. Wow. Wow. Jeez. I've not heard that one. And apparently it's been happening a lot. There you go. And see, so that, that's part of the, the critical thinking and the knowledge is also talking to other people about it and actually shining a light on it and say, look, well, this happened to me. Or a friend had this happen to them. Um, I've seen, I've heard stories, I should say, of um, little old ladies going into banks and going, I need to, I need to take a loan out for $10,000. And the, it's a small branch and the lady behind the counter is like, well, that seems like, you know, a very unusual activity for you. I know you quite well and you've never done anything like that before. And the old lady has said, um, well, I've been told by the ATO that I've got this huge debt. And I need to pay it. And like, let me just check on that for you. And they make a few phone calls and they're like, no, you're, you're being scammed. Or uh, uh, you often see notices at the counter at Coles and Safeway saying, if you've been asked to buy Apple gift cards as a form of payment for anything, this is a warning to you to say that it's probably a scam. Um, I've seen some of them on ATMs as well, just dotted around the place. Uh, scam warnings because, as you've seen, 148, 148.9 uh, 
I think it was a million dollars in 2019. This is big business. So it's serious, it needs to be taken seriously. Uh, let's see what we have next. Is that the last slide? It might be the last slide there. Nope. Highest five universal phone fraud truths, prevention truths. Uh, number one, you don't have to answer your phone. Just because your phone's ringing doesn't mean you have to answer it. Phones are designed by nature to go, hey, pick me up, hey, pick me up, the sound of it ringing. Uh, you can let it go to the answering machine. There is no law against hanging up on a phone fraud scammer. So if someone's scamming you, or even if it's just uh, a server you don't want to take, you can just hang up on them. Uh, don't talk to them, just hang up. This also goes with the last one. Don't get into a conversation. Don't give out any information you don't have to. Uh, if you don't have a mobile phone and instead use a home landline, you aren't safe either. My uh, father-in-law does not have a home phone line. He didn't want the NBN. Um, he got a letter in the mail saying you know, that there was you know, a scam. So it can happen via many different methods. Uh, do not mess around with the scammers. Uh, my mum is a good one for doing the opposite of this. When they call up and say, we have, there's a problem with your window, she goes, well, we don't have any windows here. Uh, it gets a bit, you know, a bit smart with them. But don't forget, these people making these calls, um, they're, they're committing crime and they could have connections. And you don't want to become um, a phone fraud scammer's pet project. Because you could have a whole office full of people that he can you know, get to start annoying you or harassing you. Um, so you're best not to mess around with them and get smart. You're best just to hang up and they'll move on to the next person. Um, and that is the end of the presentation. Um, there are some, there's a link there where it says www.hobstar.io slash training slash scams. There are some extra files there that you can actually go and get. The, um, the phone fraud prevention one actually is like five pages with um, details of each of those scams and some extra information. So you can actually go there and um, get some extra information. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, you can also contact me anytime on hobstar at protonmail.com. So if you are getting pop-ups and things, you can contact me on there. If you have my mobile number, feel free to, to give me a buzz. Um, otherwise, email me and say, hey, I'm having computer problems or um, someone said this to me the other day and I'm not sure if it's true. I'm quite happy to talk to you about um, what's going on uh, and help fix things up for you guys.